Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today uh, we're talking about three-way valves and incorporating them into your rainwater harvesting system. When you have a finite water supply like a rainwater tank and you have a need on the, on the supply end uh, for an infinite amount of water, so to speak, uh, then you need a, a secondary water supply to feed that need um, if and when the rainwater supply runs out. So for that we use three-way valves where we're bringing in rainwater, we're bringing in another secondary water supply, we're bringing them together and the three-way valve is what uh, decides which supply to use and when. There are a couple different models that we carry of three-way valves. Uh, the first is a residential unit. Um, this is made by uh, Davey, uh, which is an Australian company. And uh, this is all electronic. It's very self-sufficient, meaning that once you have it programmed, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about which water supply it's, it's drawing from. On this three-way valve, you have this, the connection for the city water line. It has a built-in check valve, but you want to check with your local plumbing department to verify your local plumbing code um, because you may be required to put a more substantial backflow prevention device before you connect to this three-way valve. City water comes in here. Uh, you have your cistern pump, whatever you're using to pump out your rain tank. That supply would come into the bottom here, and then the, uh, the port to send the water to your end use. This 308 valve uh, comes equipped with a float switch that goes into the tank at a preset level, whatever you determine with this float switch. Once the water level dips down, this float switch sends a signal to the main body of the three-way valve and it will automatically say that there's no more rainwater and it will initiate this city water or well water backup supply to feed your, your supply. Again, this is the Davy three-way valve, a very cost-effective way to control your rainwater supply in relation to the, your secondary water supply. The second method that we use, um, and this, uh, we mainly incorporate this for commercial systems, uh, this would be a, a Bonomi motorized three-way valve. It works much the same as the Davy unit, but uh, in this case, we're setting our own controls um, with the float switch in the tank. The way the Bonomi works is, again, we have a, a city water port or a well water port or whatever your secondary water supply is. We have a port for that. We have a port for incoming water from our rainwater catchment system. And then we have a third port that sends the water to our end use, whether it be uh, bathrooms or industrial power washing, whatever the end use is for the, for the rainwater, that's what it's gonna send it to. On top, we have the indication of which port is being drawn from. Um, so you can set your rainwater to be the open port and the city water to be the closed port or vice versa, it doesn't much matter. Um, and you'll notice that there are um, gland nuts here on the side to receive electrical supply. You'll, you'll not only have a power supply to power the motor in this, and you'll also have a secondary uh, gland nut to receive the signal from your, um, pre uh, your float switch inside your rainwater tank. For this model, we recommend using a two-way float switch. Uh, this float switch is different than a standard float switch. A standard float switch is either normally open or normally closed. This is both normally open and normally closed. In one direction, say that there's water in the tank and it will turn the valve accordingly, indicating that it needs to draw from the, the rainwater supply. And then in the other direction, it will also send a circuit, uh, and this would be in a low-level situation, and that would indicate that the rainwater tank is drawn down and it needs to rotate the motor to be supplied from your secondary water supply. The reason that we need a two-way switch is that we need this motor to be energized at all times. There's no, there's no default to close or default to open. It is energized to stay in one position or the other. So we always need power coming in, whereas if we just use a single pole float switch, um, we would eventually get the separation of the circuit and there would be no energy getting to the motor. In the event of a power outage uh, or um, if you're just wanting to switch channels, you would 
uh, disconnect the power going to the unit and push down on this black override, manual override, and turn it to the appropriate channel, whatever you want it to stay at. That's what, that's what you do. So usually in the case of power outages, during a power supply, you probably don't have pressurized water from your cistern because there's no power getting to the pump. So you would override this and turn it to your secondary water supply, your city water, municipal water supply. I hope this has been helpful and thank you very much for watching. As always, please uh, visit our website, www.rainbrothers.com, where you can find all these products as well as more information about them. Thank you very much. <music>